Hello. So uh, we are right up at your first section test. Uh, so I'm recording this brief video just to go over what's expected for uh, these these section tests. Um, the the first thing that you'll see on the test, I have probably what's going to be the only printed copy of this here. Uh, but the first thing that you'll see is um, the due date, which is February 8th, uh, which is a Monday at 5 p.m. Uh, so I give you a good five days to work on this. Uh, you've got all of your materials. You can rescreen the videos. Um, you can think carefully about these, and you've still got the forums open if you're having difficulty understanding some of the nuances of this material. So uh, you've got lots of resources at your disposal for, for or this this assignment um, then uh, it, what you get is a bunch of boilerplate um, uh, with regard to the, the description of the tech section tests uh, the best assignment policy and uh, assignment um, it, it, it submission as well and a note about plagiarism uh, don't do it we won't have a problem um, so the section test uh, so we're going to have three of them. This is the first of them. Um, two theorists, in this case, uh, Socrates and Plato. Um, each test will consist of questions totaling 20 possible points, typically um, five short answer questions asking you to define a term and, uh, uh, or make an important distinction related to the particular philosopher and one longer answer question. The questions will be designed to test both reading comprehension and a more general understanding of the ideas that we have studied. That is, uh, the readings and all of the video material are fair game for these tests. I didn't hit the video material all too uh, hardly here, but um, nonetheless, it will be very handy. And if you frame your answers around something that Roderick or someone said, uh, that may be helpful to you. Um, uh, my video material is important to this too, because I sort of um, teach to the important distinctions and ideas and that sort of thing. Um, so, uh, these tests are posted to Moodle at the end of each section covered by the quiz, um, and I've got the dates indicated below. That's from the syllabus. Um, you will have at least five days to engage with the test material, and it's posted today, so um, you're all set there. Your responses should be submitted by Moodle, and get them in on time. Um, missed assignments. If uh, the sky is falling, you've got to let me know at least 12 hours after the deadline in question, preferably before if you see this guy falling and say, whoa, I'm not going to be able to make this because my pet died or I'm really sick or something. Um, let me know and we can work something out. Um, after the 12 hour deadline, uh, I've got to set a deadline at some point right? because these semesters keep on going and if we're going back, I post model answers for these once the, 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 the deadline is passed as well. So so um, I also can't start grading until I've got the, all of the ones in that I'm going to get in because effectively what I'm doing is sharing with your fellow students assessment. And um, when I grade, I refer to the model answers. So that means they're already posted. So in addition to all the resources that you've got there, I can't give you the answer to the test. Um, it, so effectively, I've got to start grading quick. Uh, so I need your assignments in quick. Quick. Um, so within 12 hours, if I know I'm giving you a day extension or something along those lines, we can work something out. Um, but nonetheless, anyhow, it talk to me. Uh, extensions require a conversation. Assignment submission. It's your responsibility to make sure your assignments have been uploaded properly to Moodle. When you submit, sure, be sure to double check that your upload was successful. If I don't have it, it's not there. Um, I can't go chasing after you for this stuff. Um, frequently, especially in these online courses, um, I have students that go dark and don't submit. Um, I have too many students to go chasing each individual student for their submissions. And, uh, you know, um, so just just make sure your assignment is submitted. Right. That's 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 all. If you're freaked out about it, email it also. That way, I'm sure you're sure I have it. Right. Um, 
zero tolerance policy on plagiarism. If you're using textual material beyond your own reflections, you must provide a reference to uh, or that, that guides your reader to your source material. Read the OU policies on plagiarism carefully and ensure that your submitted work is properly referenced. Um, the idea is that if it's not your idea, you have to give whoever had that idea credit for that idea. Otherwise, you're stealing somebody else's thought. Um, so um, it, it's it. There's a whole big bad world of ideas out there that you can use, just so long as you say, hello, I'm using these ideas. Um, you know, right here, I've got a big honk and paper, right? And um, right at the bottom, I, yep, this is page 33, and I'm at footnote number 63. So it's, I mean, <clears throat> you can use material outside your own reflections, it, but for this, largely, largely what I'm looking for in terms of these tests is how much you yourself have understood of this material. If you are riffing off an idea that came from one of the videos, say, hey, it came from Roderick's video. If you're riffing off something that you found in your own online readings, um, I prefer what comes from your own head, but if you're doing something like that, uh, tell me where it came from. All right? That way, uh, everything is above board. Okay? So, um, two parts to this. Uh, I give you a list of your readings. It's Plato Five Dialogues, The Apology and the Credo, which is this book right here. It's just two of the five. Um, and Plato's Phaedrus. And uh, keep in mind, we only went to page 49 with this guy. Um, so, uh, the video material, Socrates video, that's my video, Roderick Socrates in the Life of Inquiry, uh, Philosophy, A Guide to Happiness, Socrates on Self-Confidence, Plato, Phaedrus video, Plato's Theory of the Forms, Beginner, that's the one I posted to Moodle there, School of Life, Philosophy, Plato. So, um, those are all of your resources for this from the core of the course, right? You're expected to have screened and otherwise engaged with the readings and the video material as presented because this is this is the course. This is how it's delivered, right? Um, so short answer questions. These are short answer questions requiring between three to five sentences in response for each. So that's basically a paragraph in response to each of these questions. By sentences, I mean full sentences, point form responses are far too vague to serve as acceptable. Thing is, um, with a point form response, I have to do too much interpreting. And since I already know what I'm expecting you to get at, what I wind up doing is giving too much to your responses, I need you to use language like a scalpel to explain these ideas pertaining to this material, right? So the idea is not for me to go, yeah, 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 I understand, but for you to demonstrate your understanding. Like I said at the beginning of the course, this is a course that is going to ask you to use language in a fairly precise manner to communicate ideas. So um, that's what we're testing for. So for that, I'm going to need full sentences. So. Um, five questions, um, two points each, uh, total 10 points for section one. Um, I tried to be fairly straightforward with these questions. Um, I think I want two Socrates and three Plato. Um, so th that's what we're talking about there. Uh, question one, Socrates, on page 35 of Five Dialogues, that's this book here, um, presents an argument uh, where he compares himself to a gadfly. In what respect is he like a gadfly, and why is this important by his argument to the city-state of Athens? That's part one of the question. So effectively, what you're doing there is unpacking the metaphor. You're not just saying Socrates is the gadfly, the city-state of Athens is um, the great noble steed. What you're doing is explaining in what respects Socrates is the gadfly who stings the noble steed of Athens, right? So in what respect, what, what mechanism is he using in order to sting the horse, right? And why is that important by his argument, right? Um, do, 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 do. Second part of this question, so for your second point, 
How might this argument be used in, uh, to support a case for freedom of speech and, by extension, freedom of the press? This requires a bit of thought on your part. Um, you've got to think to yourself, well, it, it, effectively, what is Socrates on trial for? Right? And in what respect is the city-state of Athens um, trying to get him to more or less sit down and shut up. There is a great reference in here, right? Um, I know I've got it highlighted in the apology here, so I'll take a second and see. Do, 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 do. <clears throat> here it is, page 41. But Socrates, if you leave us, um, uh, will you not be able to live quietly without talking? Right? Socrates, why don't you sit down and shut up? Uh, well, it's an infringement on, anyhow, I'm giving it too much. So that's your first question. Question two, and this one relates to the Credo. So two dialogues, a question for each. Um, in his fictional conversation with the laws of Athens, Socrates introduces the distinct but related notions of a social contract and tacit consent. Define each of these notions distinguishing between them. So what's a social contract and what is tacit consent? I want to see if you see the central mechanism at work in the Crito, because effectively Socrates is doing something specific. Here are two competing theories of justice. If we accept Socrates' theory of justice, effectively he's made an agreement. How has he agreed to the agreement, et cetera, et cetera, right? So anyhow. Um, so that's 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 question two. Then we're on to Plato. Um, I spent some time uh, with Lysias' speech and Socrates' first speech in the video. These are important. Um, and uh, the longer answer question will actually reflect back um, to that material. Uh, but the shorter answer questions uh, go basically straight to the bones of the matter here briefly discuss the constitution of the soul uh, offered by Plato at the start of Socrates' second speech. How, by the argument, or argument offered in this speech, does platonic love bring harmony to the soul? That's one of the things that platonic love does. Right? So by constitution of the soul, I'm going to even direct you to the passage. Right? It's on the bottom of... Um, I want to say, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, it's further on. There we go, uh, page 30. That then is enough about the soul's immortality, and that's an awful argument for the immortality of the soul. Now, here is what we must say about its structure or constitution. To describe Oh, what the soul is actually like would require a long account, altogether a task for the God in every way, but to say what it's like is humanly possible and takes less time. So let's do the second in our speech. It's the pie chart thing that I gave you on the video, right? <coughs> and relate that to the argument about platonic love more generally, right? So, um... Uh, that's that question. Question four, and I you, I can't see you getting past Plato without actually understanding what these buggers are. Um, it briefly introduce Plato's theory of the forms. This is his metaphysics, right? This is the key notion in terms of understanding Plato. So what are the forms? I gave you that, that, that Plato's theory of the forms beginner video. Um, so uh, that is... Uh, what we're talking about there, right? Um, I gave you the my cat to the essence of catness kind of example as well. And then finally, number five, and this is your last short answer question. Uh, briefly discuss Plato's theory of recollection. And I go over it in the video, um, it, the the Plato's theory of the forms beginner video uh, goes over that as well. And then discuss how platonic love brings us closer to um, the knowledge of the forms, noting the special character of beauty. 
remember, beauty is what's handy dandy. It's the handy dandy form, right? Um, it does something special. And uh, you will find what special it does on page. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Where is it? It's kind of madness. Uh, 39. So that's, that's where you'll find what's handy dandy about beauty. So that's your short answer questions. Now, part two is a little bit more involved. Um, it's worth 10 points, it's, and it's one question all to itself. So here's where you're doing something a little bit more sustained in terms of presenting ideas. Um, uh, longer answer questions require a minimum of three paragraphs in response. Um, a paragraph consists of um, a minimum of three sentences. The goal for this section is to make a short argumentative account of the material at hand as directed by the question below. Right. I would say about three to five paragraphs would be good uh, for this question. Question, and it's comparative. Right. I'm having you think about Socrates and think about Plato and think about the gulf between uh, their theory here. In the Apology, while defining, uh, defending himself against his accuser, Socrates argues uh, that he could not have been guilty of corrupting the youth deliberately, but must have done so um, you, 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 unwillingly, I'll correct that, if he did so at all, all right? Um, C5 Dialogues, page 30. Apologies for my typo, I'll correct it on your form. This reveals a nuance of Socrates' position, one that shows that he holds that nobody acts wickedly, deliberately. Wickedness, by this argument, arises out of ignorance. It's arguable that Plato, through his treatment of the constitution of the soul that we saw in the Phaedrus, which we've already answered a question about, expands the moral psychology of Socrates to account for, one ha uh, for how one could know the good, yet fail to do the good. See Phaedrus, Socrates' second speech. Right? So it's right the second speech. I've already directed you to the passage where he introduces the constitution of the soul. And this is a little bit deeper engagement with the mechanism that's going on there, read in light of Plato. Right? So for Socrates, those that know the good automatically do the good, and nobody does wicked acts knowingly right? or willingly. Right? They must be unwilling. Right? So, um, and I'll correct that typo. It's an important typo. Right? Um, so your task is to briefly introduce each of these arguments. Right? So here's Socrates' position with regard to this. Here's Plato's position regarding the constitution of the soul, followed by a brief comparative account of these positions. So, well, Socrates holds that there is no such thing as a mustache-twisting villain. Plato, right, seems to think that there is a mechanism at work for how somebody could know what the right thing to do with, but somehow failed to do so. Handy element of um, the argument in the Phaedrus happens on page 18, uh, where um, it, Plato, through Socrates, defines eros, love, erotic love. The unreasoning desire that overpowers a person's considered impulse to do right is driven to take pleasure in beauty. It's force reinforced by its kindred desires for beauty in human bodies. This desire, all-conquering in its forceful drive, takes its name from the word for force and is called eros. Right? So, that seems to be your gate into engaging with this question. So, um, February 8th, uh, Monday, by 5 p.m., that's when this is due. Um, my advice is get an early start on it and chip away at the questions. If you leave it to the last minute, uh, I think what you'll find is there are nuances to each of these questions um, that you'll need to engage with, and you might not, if you leave it till the last minute, have the time to do so. So, um, I look forward to reading your responses. If you have any additional questions, please let me know. Um, with regard to referencing external sources, um, I don't care how, I care that, right? So, at this point, um, it's the principle of the thing. If I'm going looking for what you're referencing, I should be able to find it. That's all. 
um, get them in on time, make sure you submit properly, um, and uh, if you have any problems, contact me, and uh, we'll work through them. All right, have good days, one for each of you.